this was an interview that Joe Biden did with Complex Magazine. Again, part of his media blitz. And he is talking to a reporter named Speedy Mormon, which is the weirdest name I think I've ever heard. But I actually really like this guy. He's doing an incredible job here. Um, and they chose to open. They chose a cold open that I think was very interesting. And I want to talk about briefly, but here we go. Do you know what his line says? I just ask questions. I don't answer. Okay. He says, do you know what a Zionist is? And Speedy says, I just ask questions. I don't answer. Now, you got to wonder why a channel dedicated mostly to like hip hop culture, music, news, but specifically for young people would choose to lead off with that um, little moment. And I think the reason is that people are kind of wondering if President Joe Biden is a Zionist. And it's also showcases their guy, their, their, their journalists, pushing back kind of being like, it's not my job to answer what it is. I'm just asking you whether you are one. And so it's kind of like a, you know, a chippy little moment there. But I also think that the reason that it was put in the front is because for a lot of people, who were not previously exposed to the word Zionism or who did not grow up um, as a Zionist or, you know, uh, believing that, you know, Israel was the safe haven for Jews and the only safe haven for Jews. What the last nine months have actually shown is that Zionism is a stand in for colonialism. And a lot of people, especially young people and especially people of color whose own um, histories whose own whether no matter where they're from they understand they understand what colonialism what apartheid what segregation what all of this looks like the kinds of images they've been seeing coming out of gaza the kinds of images they've been seeing coming out of the west bank those are things that in history books and through their own family stories they have identified with right to say nothing of if they are you know palestinian american themselves so a lot of people nowadays, young people, do not associate Zionism with a good thing. And I know for a lot of liberal Zionists, that's a really hard thing to hear, but it is true. And so that's why they let off with this. It's a very interesting quote to lead off with. And this interview is truly a train wreck. I mean, Speedy is being incredibly um, generous in trying to understand what the president is saying on a number of moments. But I will just go to the moment around Palestine because I think it is perhaps one of the more relevant moments uh, for, again, young voters, young viewers, and also just shows you how out of touch Joe Biden is with not only the reality of what is happening in Gaza, but also what uh, his potential voters care about. Trump. There are... <laughs> I just fast forwarded for to a random point and Joe Biden just goes, Trump, well, never mind. Like, he's already in the middle of fucking up an answer. He was about to make a new point, doesn't have the point, and is just like, that. Ah, never mind. And Speedy kind of smiles and is like, he moves on. There are some people who've made their mind up and they've decided that they are voting for former He done. Done. Panic America. What has he done to help the young people in America? What has he done to deal with racism? What has he done to deal with the fact that you had you know, the, the way in which African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans are treated. I mean, what has he done? Your stance and support. Okay, the, I mean, that's just such like like just point to what you've done, and even the things that you've done. You know, expanding Pell grants. You know, offering like small home loans to Black Americans, like that is good, but it also isn't. In terms of standing up to racism, you know, especially what kicked off the 2020 Black Lives Matter, you know, re remix, redux, <laughs> the movement, he, Joe Biden has not addressed that at all, um, at all. He, he's, he and a lot of Democratic leadership haven't touched police reform with a 10-foot pole. He's touched gun reform. He's touched um, uh, much more than that. Uh, he's touched student debt relief more than that. He's touched climate change more than that. Three things that I also think he's been 
woefully inadequate on, he's actually done more on those three uh, uh, issues than he has on any kind of policing reform whatsoever. Um, and, and it just, it just gets worse for him. Like he, it doesn't, it doesn't look good for him more broadly on, on when it comes to appealing to black and brown people. Um, and certainly his policies around Israel. So take a look. For Israel has been unwavering. Uh, during the debate, you said that we are the biggest producer of support for Israel of anyone in the world. You also said that we're providing Israel with all the weapons they need and when they need them. Uh, back in April, uh, $26 billion in aid was sent or was approved to be sent to Israel. Why? I said defensive weapons. I denied them offensive weapons that are usually 2,000 pound bombs and the rest of it because I made it real clear they cannot use weapons that we provide them to, in fact, use in civilian areas. And that's why I put together this plan. I said defensive weapons. What the hell is the difference between a defensive and an offensive weapon? Was, you know, and there are people who to this day will say the atomic bomb was a defensive weapon, okay? Who will defend the, a nuclear holocaust as a defensive move. Israel's entire genocide is being pitched as a defensive battle. So offensive and defensive is purely based on whether or not you think you have the moral high ground or not, whether you are white enough to claim that moral high ground. So yeah, he didn't, he stopped selling them 2000 pound bombs, but he continues to sell them 500 pound bombs. And all you got to do is drop that, uh, four times and there you go. And lo and behold, they have, and also we haven't even, you know, trying to keep today light, but this is a heinous week for Israel's war crimes. It's almost like they're ramping up the amount of destruction and death because they see we're all distracted with, you know, assassination slash will our democratic nominee drop out. But the last thing is, do you not know what Gaza is? Like, Gaza is the most populated place on earth. You know what you have to do to be the most populated place on earth? You gotta get a lot of civilians together. There has to be a lot of people living in tight quarters. So the idea that you could have a weapon that would, like, whatever, like swerve around civilians in a defensive manner is utter bullshit. And he knows it. The idea of saying like, you know, well, you can't drop um, these bombs in a densely populated civilian area. You've just described Gaza. That is Gaza. So either you can drop bombs on Gaza or you can't drop bombs on Gaza, but there is no hedging. And especially not this week, especially not with the kinds of uh, of war crimes that we've seen ongoing this week. So he's just lying. He's purely lying. He's been fact-checked on this lie and, and he continues, but there's more. My question though is why, why is your and United States at the current moment support for Israel so strong? Look, I think the question has to be speedy. Your voting base and particularly young people in this country do not share your blind allegiance to the state of Israel because their eyes are open and oh also they have eyes so why do you continue with this I think that's more apt but Biden does not picking up what he's laying down Israel if there weren't in Israel every Jew in the world would be at risk there we go. There's once again the anti-Semitic re remark. If there was no Israel, every Jew in the world would be at risk. Why? Why? What are you? What are you going to do to them? What's going to happen to them? Are Jews at risk right now? Who's coming for them? Who? Who? Seriously though, who's coming for them right now? Uh, Palestinian activists in kafias, uh, people who want to boycott Starbucks. Who is coming for? The, like, is there something you're not telling us? Who's coming for the Jews other than the fucking neo-Nazi Nick Fuentes ass motherfuckers who can't wait to get back in the White House, which your entire run again at the White House is guaranteeing will happen, guaranteeing that he will get back in there. I mean, it's just it's like. This is, again, I am not Jewish, but 
ask anti-Zionist Jews. This is a very problematic line that nine months into this, he still doesn't understand how fucked up that sounds to American Jews. The second biggest Jewish population outside of Israel. He does not understand how fucked up that sounds to say, American Jews, you're not safe in this country. Every Who are you making them safe? How are you making them safe? By criminalizing Palestine uh, activism? That doesn't make them safe. Jew in the world at risk. And so there's a need for it to be strong and a need for Israel to be able to have, after World War II, the ability for, the, the ability for Jews to have a place that was their own. That, well, you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. And the Zionist is about whether or not Israel is a safe haven for Jews because of their history of how they've been persecuted. Okay, so a few things. He goes back to second talking point, and he always says, you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist, and you have to have a safe haven after World War II. You know who the safe haven is for? The safe haven is for the West. The safe haven is so that countries like the United States don't have to accept more Jewish refugees of the Holocaust than they already have, or than they even didn't want in the first place. That's who it's for. The safe haven is a safe haven for all of the guilt for not intervening and stopping Hitler earlier to potentially save six million Jews' lives. To not, it is, Israel is, assumes all of that guilt from the West for allowing such an atrocity to go on. And who gets to suffer for it? the Palestinian people. Oh, also the Jewish people of Israel and Israelis themselves. Is Israel a safe haven? I'm sorry. Is Israel a safe haven? Is Israel a safe haven? And if every fucking liberal Zionist te who tells me that it is would move there, I want to see it. I want to see you tell me proudly that yes, the state of Israel in all of its magnificent apartheid and magnificent uh, uh, occupation has created a super safe civil society for the people of Israel. You know it's bullshit. You know it's bullshit. You know it is. It, it, it has been and it continues to be bullshit. Everything is wrong about what he said, but it gets better. Are you a Zionist? Yes. Now, now you'll be able to make a lot out of that because people don't know what a Zionist is. You'll be able to make a lot out of that because people don't know what a Zionist is. He you laughed. know what a Zionist is? I just ask questions. I don't answer. By the way, I'm the guy that did more for the Palestinian community than anybody. I'm the guy that opened up all the assets. I'm the guy that made that sure that I got the Egyptians to open the border to let good goods to medicine and, and food and and but what's happening is, and I'm the. Okay. This is like, end this, end this now. This poor, this poor war criminal. I swear to God. I'm the guy that let in goods from, from where? From Egypt? For how long? When? Where? This is July. Some of you might be watching saying, wait, when was this from? This is from now. The Rafah crossing, which is on the border between Gaza and Egypt, has not been open since May 7th, people. May 7th. What is he talking about? You cannot get out of Gaza right now. You can't get food in. You can't get aid in. You can't get medical supplies. There are no working hospitals and no one is allowed to leave. They are trapped. This is a this is a genocide. This is a forced famine being w waged upon a helpless population. No, no, no. I'm sorry. A population that, yeah, has a couple of Hamas fighters with a couple of old fucking Kalashnikovs popping off every once in a while. And you've decided I'm going to go scorched earth with this, that it is absolutely okay to kill everyone. And there is no distinguishment between civilian or fighter. And where we started this show was about this, but you know, you see the news and you're like, oh, there was crossfire, there was Hamas fire. Like, 
The world has abandoned you. The world has abandoned you and your people are dying. Your families are dying. Entire name, uh, last names are being wiped out. What would you do? What would you do? Everyone's gone. No one is, there's no food. There's no way. What do you do? You have, you have white banners all over the place. There are negotiations right now going on for a ceasefire. Apparently, I don't know what number, what round of ceasefire we are on, but I'll tell you what's going to happen. Netanyahu is going to renege. He's going to go back on it. He's going to say, no, I prefer to recolonize Gaza because actually that's what the far right in my country wants from me. And also if I, I if I did leave power, uh, I would, you know, be locked up. So I need this. Thanks. Meanwhile, Republicans are talking about dropping a nuke. So I'm, I don't have any stars in my eyes about Republicans being better on this. The guy that's been able to pull together the Arab states to help agree to help the Palestinians with food and shelter. I'm, I'm the guy who pulled together the Arab states. That's actually a lie because it was Trump who did that and in, in large part with the Abraham Accords. But to provide Palestinians with food and shelter, I don't know if that is true. I'm not, I'm not sure that any food or shelter has been allowed to get in. And surely if no one can get out, how the fuck could a country like Jordan even help out in this moment? I'm the guy, and so it's not, I mean, I, I've been, I have been very supportive of the Palestinians. They, but Hamas are a bunch of thugs. Hamas is. is not worthy to, I was over there about eight days after the massacre, saw photographs of, of mothers and daughters being tied in a rope together, kerosene pouring their head and them burned to death. Nothing's happened like that since the Holocaust. And it's just- What, 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 what is this? So now he's repeating October 7th, uh, I'm going to fact check this. I will, I will triple check it, but is that another hogtied and kerosene poured on him? Guys, what does this sound like to you? Hamas are thugs. This man is so unserious about ending this. What's going on, Frantifa? If you haven't already, subscribe to this channel right now. Hit that button. And also, you can become a patron and support the show every single week. Get access to bonus episodes and exclusive merchandise. Patreon.com slash Bituation Room. Do it.